Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. We broadcast live on Mondays from the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving greater success and sustaining that greater success, leadership, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is Keith Amemiya. He is the Senior Vice President of Island Holdings, which is the parent company of Island Insurance and four other local subsidiaries. Keith was also the former executive director of the Hawaii High School Athletic Association. He is an extraordinary leader and extremely successful in everything he does. And today, we are going beyond business. Hey, Keith, thanks for taking time to be here today. Thanks for having me, Rusty. It's a pleasure. I've known you for many years since you were executive director. You've seen me in action as when I was head coach for the Puno Boys varsity tennis team. Um, but I want to know about your history. Can you tell me about you know, where you grew up and what schools you went to? Sure. Um, I grew up in uh, Hawaii Kai. I went to public schools from kindergarten through 10th grade. And then I made the transition to Punahou School in my uh, junior and senior year. Um, after I graduated there, I got my undergraduate degree from the University of Hawaii at Manoa in finance. Uh, in the School of Business Administration. And then I got my law degree from the University of Hawaii as well at the William S. Richardson School of Law. And I started my career as an attorney, a litigation attorney, um, in one of the law firms here in downtown and eventually made the transition to the Hawaii High School Athletic Association. So why, why did you get interested in law? How did that come about? I had a lot of uh, family members and mentors who practice law, um, and so they gave me the, the idea to attend law school. And frankly, um, I wasn't entirely sure what I was going to do after college, and I thought uh, a law degree would be useful whether you practice law or, or didn't. And there's always um, there's a lot of fundamental uh, knowledge and principles you gain from going to law school and practicing law that can apply to other careers uh, down the road if I chose not to continue with practicing law. Oh, that sounds good. And you're a big sports guy, but did you play any sports in high school? You know, interestingly enough, I, 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 I loved, always liked sports, participating and, and uh, watching sports and following it, um, but I was a fairly marginal athlete, so uh, when you're uncoordinated, you, you you do sports that don't take a lot of talent. And um, I was actually decent in running, so I participated in cross country and track and field. And I did okay. You, know. you weren't the last? No, I, I, didn't, I didn't come in last. I didn't come in first. I was kind of in the middle of the pack. But um, that, that's important for people to know that you don't have to excel in sports to learn from sports. Uh, sports teaches you so many things. Um, besides, it's, it's a good physical activity. You learn a lot of values and principles through sports, as you know, as a, as a coach. I agree. Uh, that, that can uh, carry you on through your adult life, whether it's in your personal career or even your prof professional career. Yeah, totally agree there. Now, you're a great family man. Um, can you tell me about your wife, Bonnie, and your son, Chris? So um, my wife, Bonnie, um, who you met, uh, is a um, successful uh, accountant. Uh, she's currently the chief financial officer for Dwayne Carisu uh, for his company, the AIO Group. Yeah. And uh, she's uh, enjoying her work there. She. Um, she likes working for Dwayne. Uh, Dwayne's such a great role model and leader in our community. And uh, she's very supportive of, of anything that I, I choose to pursue, whether it's law or running high school sports or what I'm doing now. So I'm really lucky to have a very supportive wife. For sure. Uh, my son, Chris, just graduated from high school uh, this past June uh, from Punahou. And we just returned, my wife and I, last night from dropping him off at 
uh, Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles. Uh, he began his freshman year of college uh, this morning. So hopefully Great. it went fine. Great. And Chris played baseball for Punahou, is that right? He did. He played baseball for Punahou. Um, he's a better athlete than me. He, <laughs> he, uh, he played on the varsity uh, baseball team at Punahou for three years and uh, enjoyed the experience. And, and like me, he gained a lot of uh, knowledge besides the sports specific knowledge through uh, from baseball. He, I think he gained a lot of friendships and core values um, that hopefully will carry him on through the rest of his life. For sure. Well, let's talk sports. You were the legendary <laughs> Hawaii High School Athletic Association executive director for 12 years? For 12 years. Now, how did you end up becoming, getting that job, getting that position? You know, it was kind of by chance. Um, um, I, I enjoyed practicing law and uh, I learned a lot from it. But at the same time, I wasn't sure I necessarily wanted to be a litigator the, for my entire career. Sure. Uh, it, it can be very contentious. <laughs> yeah. um, and and, uh, and uh, draining at times. <laughs> um, so uh, when I was approached by a, a fellow attorney to consider applying for the HHSAA job, um, I decided to go for it and see what happened. Uh, I was. Pleasantly surprised they selected me because I, I figured the normal course of selection would be to go with someone within the industry, but they went outside, took a chance on me, and, and I was really lucky to get the job. No, oh, that sounds great, and I'm, they made a great decision because I have great respect for you uh, being a, the head coach at Punahou during those years when you were executive director. You're very fair. You love all sports. Um, you really helped everything get better, every sport get better, and that's for sure. Now, what was some of your challenges that you dealt with as executive director? Well, um, one of the challenges was the, the public schools in particular are financially constrained. Um, you know, there are so many needs uh, within the public school system, whether it's upgrading facilities, um, uh, not only athletic facilities, but academic facilities. Um, there's, there's teachers to pay. There's just so many financial needs that they're always uh, short when it comes to athletics. So I viewed my job as, as, as one of trying to help the public schools with funding as much as possible. And then the non-financial challenge was just trying to break the status quo. Um, once people get into a routine and they're used to things, um, I guess it's human nature, people don't like change, but I try to break that mold yeah. uh, as I see fit. And, and um, you can't stay still, as you know, as a coach or as an athlete, you always have to strive to better yourself, improve yourself. And I believe that high school athletics at the time when I took over was going fine, but I thought it had so much more potential. So I made it my mission to expand and grow sports, not only add sports like canoe paddling, judo, and a lot of female sports like girls golf, girls wrestling, girls water polo, but improve the sports that we already have, like tennis, for example, uh, where you are a very successful coach. Um, let's find the best facilities across the state with, uh, at which to have our state tournaments. Let's always try to improve the format for the tournament, and and let's try to make it fair, and and um, you know make it such that everyone has a fair opportunity to win a state championship um, on a level playing field, and hopefully I accomplish that. No, I, I I'm guaranteed you <laughs> accomplish that. You know, you being a successful leader, you have to have great relationships, and you have to coordinate with everyone, and kind of have win-win situations for everyone, and you definitely did that. But what, what's the one thing that you're most proud of when you're executive director? I think um, trying to get everyone to work together and move in the same direction for the greater good of the student athletes. Yeah. Sometimes as adults, we get caught up in our own battles and our own issues. Um, and, and what's best for us as parents or coaches or administrators. And I try to rein people back and remember what's our core mission, what's our core purpose 
and our core purpose is to do what's best for the, our student athletes. They're our future, they're counting on us, and we need them to uh, be given the tools to be as successful as possible to move our communities forward for generations to come. And so um, that's what I always try to do is to remind people and myself that we're here not for ourselves, that we're, we're here for something much greater, and that's for our youth and our future. Agree completely. I mean, it, it does get lost along the way, but it's, it's always about the student athlete. And if, if the coaches and the parents and, the whole, and schools can remember that, right. everything will be fine. Now, let's talk football, okay? <laughs> now, I know you love football, and you, you coordinated that OIA, ILH football situation where now they're, they're playing each other in regular season games this year. Can you tell me about that? Well, um, football is important, and, and let me make clear, all, I feel all sports are important, but football is important in the sense it has the highest number of participation, and, and it's very popular. Uh, and, and we've had many successful football players come out of our state over the decades. And I felt that it was unfortunate that for the last 48 years or so, the ILH, the private schools, and the OAA, the public schools, did not play each other in the regular season. Um, I was very, very young when the split happened, and so I don't really remember it, but people tell me that <laughs> high school football, when the OIA and ILH played each other during the regular season, was incredibly successful, incredibly popular, and it galvanized and unified our communities across the island. So I felt it was important to try to reunite the two leagues um, for all those reasons, but also because it would increase finances, because attendance would be higher, TV rights would be higher, hopefully sponsorships would be higher from the corporate side. Um, there would be uh, better competition um, by creating three levels uh, and mixing <clears throat> the private and public schools. You wouldn't have as many blowouts as we've been having the last several years where um, a school like Kaiser, uh, much smaller enrollment, no longer would have to play Kahuku, who's a national powerhouse. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's not fun for either side. And by combining the leagues, you create more games of more competitive teams. And so that was important to me um, to, to create more interest, create more turnout. Um, I, I think the lopsided scores and unlevel competition was discouraging turnout in some schools. And I think the numbers this year already reflect a higher turnout in some of the schools that were struggling in terms of numbers. Well, let's talk about one of the most popular football players from Hawaii, Marcus Mariota, graduate from St. Louis School. Um, you know him well. Can you tell me about Marcus? Sure. Uh, Marcus is, is, is an ideal role model. I don't think you could create someone better for, yeah. for, as a role model, not only for our youth, but for us as adults. I mean, he's extremely talented as a football player. But above and beyond that, he's a good person. He's sincere. Um, he embodies all the values we try to instill in our children, uh, the values of hard work, perseverance, discipline, um, selflessness, and humility. So it's a pleasure to know him and his parents. And I have to give credit to his parents, uh, the dad, his dad Toa, his mother Elena. Um, they've done an amazing job with Marcus. And I, I, again, I'm so privileged to be able to know Marcus and his parents and, and his brother Matthew. And is that why Island Insurance hired him as in the commercials? Uh, no question. Um, he, he, again, embodies everything that Island Insurance tries to uh, live by, you know, it, it's helping the community, um, humility, you know, selflessness, and, and doing what's right for everyone. Yeah, so character. Mark, he's the perfect, we, can't, we couldn't think of a happier uh, or better role model, and we're pleased to have him. Speaking of character, the Little League World Series happened this past week, and Gerald Oda, the coach, the manager, he kept preaching over and over be humble, right. enjoy the moment, love each other. Yes. Can you tell me more about why those messages resonate so well with winning teams? Well, 
As you know, as a successful coach, talent certainly helps, but you need more than that to win championships. You need to play as a team. You need to sincerely care for each other. And I'll take it even further. That, that not only applies to sports teams, it applies to businesses, it applies to companies. Um, you need to work together for a common goal, and it's not about you. And I think the, um, the theme of the Honolulu Little League team, if you followed them during the regionals and uh, onto the World Series was, we is greater than me. And, and I think, you know, you and I believe that and, yeah. and adopt that philosophy wholeheartedly. And that's why they're the world champs. And we couldn't be prouder of them. Um, who doesn't love those kids? I mean, they made our state proud. Yeah, and, and, it's, and winning is just a byproduct of all of those things that you do off the field, and it's right. all about the character. So that was great for the, the world to see that. No question, and I, I'm glad you brought that up, that the most successful leaders in business or, or coaches on the athletic fields, I feel, don't measure their success or are not fixated on the wins and losses. They're fix, fixated on building the foundation and the core values that a team needs to be successful. When you take care of business from that standpoint, um, the core values of hard work, teamwork, selflessness, the wins take care of themselves. Yeah, I totally agree. Keith, we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back, we're gonna continue going beyond business. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Keith Amemia. We will be back in a quick minute. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest is Keith Amemia, the Senior Vice President of Island Holdings and former executive director of the Hawaii High School Athletic Association. And today we are going beyond business. Keith, you read my book, Beyond the Lines. Can you tell me what you liked about the book? Well, as a general premise, I loved everything about your book. As you know, we, we talked a lot before you went ahead and, and dove into this venture. Sure. And I, I, I loved everything that you told me about the book and, um, and everything you said uh, came out in the book. Uh, what I like about your book is you keep it simple. You, every chapter has a certain principle that you're trying to uh, convey to the reader and you also give uh, real life examples. I think you personalize it. It's not a lecture, it's a story that, that makes it easier for the reader to relate. So, I mean, I'm, I'm your number one fan in terms of your book, and uh, you don't have to convince me that it's a book worth reading, and hopefully everyone gets a chance to buy one and, and read it and share it with others. Oh, thank you. I feel honored that you like the book and that you're helping me with the book, too. And I value your advice and your opinion and everything, so that means the world to me. Leadership is definitely a complicated, complex subject, but I try to really keep things really simple and relatable in the book, and that's what people are telling me they like about it. Now, as Senior Vice President of Island Holdings, what, what are the companies that, that you're the parent of? So Island Holdings is a parent of five local subsidiaries, uh, Island Insurance, Atlas Insurance Agency, IC International, which is a surplus lines insurance brokerage, uh, Trademan Capital Group, the investment, investment arm of Island Holdings, 
and PAXA, that's P-A-C-X-A, which is an IT company. Right. So collectively, uh, by Hawaii standards, it's, it's a pretty big company that employs hundreds of people. We're proud of the success of all five companies and, and uh, that we're able to uh, keep people gainfully employed across the state and also give back to the community whenever we can. That's awesome. I, as I said earlier, you're extremely successful in everything that you do. Um, I want to know, Keith, how, how do you define success? I define success, I mean, that, that's kind of a broad question, yeah. but I'll give it my best shot. Success is achieving a goal that, that stretches you beyond what you sometimes feel you're capable of. Um, a success is trying to reach the pinnacle in whatever you pursue. Success is also doing it with others. You can't gain true success, in my opinion, without the help of a team, without others helping you reach that goal. And, and frankly, I feel success is more gratifying when you do it collectively as a group. And uh, sure, success can be, can be uh, uh, analyzed or assessed via wins and losses on the playing field or profits and losses in the business world. Um, those are good metrics to make sure you're on track, but when all is said and done, I feel success is something that you can't describe. It's that feeling you have in your gut. I mean, you, you know if you were successful or not. And sometimes success is achieved even though you come up short on the playing field or even in the business sector. As long as you've given it your, your best shot uh, uh, and, and tried to get others to join in the, in the effort, uh, to me, that's success as well, that you always will strive to be the best you can be. Sometimes you'll come up short, but in the long run, the wins will far outweigh the losses. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. You gotta be in it for the marathon, not the quick sprint. And I like what you said earlier about, you know, being capable. Everyone is, they're so much, they're capable of doing so much greater things than they think they are. And I think that's, that's a huge thing there. Now, I wanna ask you, Keith, why are you so successful? Well, thank you for saying I'm successful. <laughs> and, but I'd like to think you can, you can never rest on your laurels, as you know, as a coach. And so if I'm successful, great. But I, don't, I never feel I've, I've arrived or made it. That, that to be successful and to sustain success, you always have to try to challenge and improve yourself. And so I think that's a common trait of, of many successful people in the sports realm or the business realm, uh, whether it's someone like uh, Michael Jordan or Le 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 LeBron James, uh, they're always, they're never satisfied yeah. with their achievements. They're always trying to better themselves and their teammates. And so um, I think that's a, a common trait uh, of successful people is they're always striving to do better and they're always um, looking over their shoulder. They're not resting on their laurels, as you as a coach know. I mean, you, there are people always trying to gun for you or try to, try to surpass you, and you, you have to never uh, stand still. You always have to try to improve yourself. Yeah, you don't want to be complacent at all, and then you have to keep out doing what you've done so that you become even greater. And, and that's, that's really a, a parallel that a lot of these successful people and leaders have. Now, I want to ask you, Keith, what's been your greatest obstacle in achieving your success, and how did you overcome that? I kind of alluded to this earlier. Uh, one of the biggest obstacles, and maybe I'm making a generalization, but in Hawaii, we, we and maybe worldwide, people don't like change. Yeah. They, they are comfortable with the status quo, and, and going back to our success discussion, you, you can't stand still and rest on your laurels. You always have to look at ways of improving things and better uh, make things better. Um, and so that's how I always view whatever I attack in life, is to always um, uh, better yourself uh, whenever you can and, and again, to try to do it as a team. Yeah, I like that. In tennis, it's such an individual sport, but you know, being on a team in tennis was extra special, and I wanted to make it extra special for for my team, and you've, you've seen them in action for many years. 
Um, no question that um, tennis, uh, although there's an individual aspect uh, on the singles side, there, there's doubles yep. uh, teams that require a partner. But to win the team title, um, as you pointed out in tennis, uh, in Hawaii high school sports, you need every team to do what they can. And even if they come in third place or fourth place, if enough of your teammates accumulate points, you're likely going to win the state title. So there's importance in cheering on your teammates and supporting them as well, because you want them to do well to achieve the, the team goal of a state championship. Yeah, it's definitely a total team effort. Right. Now, I want to ask you, Keith, what, what do you hope to aspire to achieve in your future still? Well, I guess, uh, like, like everyone, your, your life is a continuing chapter or series of chapters. And, and I just hope to do something that's continue to do things that are fulfilling, that not only are good for me personally in terms of satisfaction, but also improve the community. I feel somewhere along the line, both locally and, and even nationally, uh, we have become a, a citizenry of, uh, or a, a group of people that are kind of focused on themselves and, and slowly over time, that's obviously not good. And I, I want to do what I can to, to unite the community, bring people together and, and remind them the importance of uh, working together for a common purpose. In the long run, every, everybody wins when you when you work together, when you go in your own silos and do your own thing, um, things just don't work out in the long run, neither for yourself or for the community. Yeah, I love your insights there, Keith. And you know, every great leader learned from another great leader. So right. who has been mentors for you? One of my first mentors is uh, attorney Bert Kobayashi. He's the senior partner of the Kobayashi Sugita and law, uh, Goda law firm here in Honolulu, one of the larger law firms in the state. He and his older uh, son, oldest son Chris, who's my age, uh, always took me under their wing. Great. And they're kind of like a adopted or Hanai family. And what I learned from Uncle Bert, as I call him, was the importance of hard work, perseverance, and also having balance in life. You work hard in the office, but when you get home, you need to put all your energy and effort in your family. And I really respect the way he's uh, managed to balance a successful business career with a family career. A lot, a lot of people are good in business, but somehow the family uh, uh, is short change, so to speak, and, yeah. and what, what I, again, admire about him was his ability to balance both. Dwayne Carice was another role model wow, and mentor great. for both my wife and I. I mean, he's incredibly successful in business, but he's also uh, a, a, such a wonderful community leader and, and, and philanthropist. His Kahawiki Village Homeless Project uh, has been phenomenal. No one thought he could ever do it and um, he's done it. They've already finished one phase. They're already working on phases two and three. Um, I just like the way he does things. He's a man of his word. Um, he's respected and trusted, and he always does the right thing. Yeah, Dwayne Carisu is amazing. I taught tennis to his wife, Susan, and his daughter, Sarah, and just a fantastic family. Now, Keith, before we close, I wanna ask you one more thing. How do we get more Marcus Mariotas, more Shane Victorinos, more Michelle Wees from Hawaii? Well, um, I think we're, we're getting to the point where Hawaii athletes are becoming more and more known. Um, success breeds success, as they say, and it becomes a snowball effect. Um, by getting our student athletes to play in Camps and clinics on the mainland, um, I believe even the internet has played a big role. You don't have to physically come to Hawaii to see our student athletes in action. You can watch video of them. And, and the more success that Marcus has and, and Michelle and, and the other athletes, it just uh, turns the attention to our island state. And already, I, I believe it's, it's working. We have Tua Tango Vailoa at yeah, Alabama. He's awesome who is probably going to be the starting quarterback for the defending national champions. 
We have another starting quarterback in the in the SEC from uh, University of Mississippi, Jordan Ta'amu, oh, yeah. City graduate, Mackenzie Milton yeah, from the University of Central Florida. I mean, we have talent and success. They just need the exposure and opportunity, and it's incumbent on us adults to keep pushing for that and make sure they're noticed because we have a ton of talent well, in let's, this state. Let's keep our fingers crossed on that, and uh, let's keep doing what we're doing, and let's ride this snowball. now. I really appreciate going in depth with you today, Keith, and all of your insights. It's fantastic having you here today. Thank you, Rusty. Appreciate it. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Please check out my website, rustykamori.com, and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. I want to encourage all of you to constantly strive to create your own superior culture of excellence every day and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.